a very warm welcome to the Morningside Arena here in Leicester for the final day of Stage 2 at the Bet Victor Championship League Snooker. Yesterday saw China's Bei Lang Ning and defending champion Kyron Wilson progress to the last eight. And we have another cracking day in store for you as players in Groups A and B take to the bays ahead of Winner's Day tomorrow. Great to have you with us again. Great to have former world champion Ken Doherty with us as well. Before we get into things uh, with Ken, though, let's take a look at how finals day is shaping up for Friday because we're now 50% complete in Group 1 with Bei Lang Ning and Kyron Wilson. In Group 2, of course, a reminder for you, Ali Carter, Ryan Day, Chow Yu Peng and Dave Gilbert in that one. Uh, it's shaping up to be absolutely fantastic on Friday, Ken. You obviously played in Group D yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? Uh, not very good, <laughs> but I was in a really tough group. You, you know, were. defending champion Karen Wilson played very well. Matthew Stevens as well, former UK and Masters champion, and Oliver Lyons as well. So it was a tough group, but uh, yeah, well, there was some positives, uh, lots of negatives, but uh, let's move on, shall we? I would say more positives <laughs> than negatives. Let's let's go positive on yeah, it. Okay, okay. I tell you what, though, you had such a tough opening mm, match against yeah. Kyron Wilson, mm. and in this kind of format, how crucial is that first frame in particular? Yeah, it is very crucial in the best of five. I must say, I do love the format, but getting off to that first frame start is very, very important for the players in this, you know, first to, first to three, basically. So, uh, yeah, it gets you on the front foot. We we always say in snooker that you never really settle down until you win that first frame. So no better time to win the first frame in this very, very short format. So, uh, But I think we're in for some cracking matches on both sides of the court and in both of these groups today, for sure. Yeah, we really are. Should we have a look at how mm. it's looking? Because over on table two, which is next door to us here um, in group B, uh, we have Peter Lyons up first against Ricky Walden. Uh, then the five-time ranking event winner Mark Allen facing former British Open champion Fergal O. Ryan, that's a really interesting group to call. If you were going to go one way or another, where would you go? Well, I mean, you would have to say the form would be with Mark Allen, you know, five-time uh, tournament winner, ranking winner. You've got Ricky Wallen in there, proven champion as well. He's won a couple of ranking tournaments there. They would probably be the form players, you would say. But don't discount the old Fergal O'Brien, you know, <laughs> fearless Fergal, as we call him in Ireland. And, of course, Peter Lyons. I mean, Peter Lyons has been around as long as I have, and that's quite saying something. <laughs> so uh, they've got lots of experience, and they're very, very tough, very experienced players, good safety players, so they'll be tough to break down. But the big scorers, you would have to say, would be Mark Allen and Ricky Walden. If you do want to watch that, by the way, that's over on matchroom.live. But we are going to be concentrating on the main table here, and that is Group A. Um, World number one, Judd Trump, up first. He's going to be uh, facing the 2018 European Masters champion, Jimmy Robertson. They're joined in the group by someone very comfortable in these surroundings, Leicester's Tom Ford, and his match uh, is against Stuart Carrington first up. This is a really interesting group, Ken. Yeah. Who, who takes your fancy? Well, I, I mean, it's going to be very exciting. Judd Trump is obviously the massive favourite, you know, and he'll be wanting. He lost in the final of this last year, and he'll obviously want to get this season off to a very, very good start. So I'm sure he's going to be in great form uh, but he's up against you know Jimmy Robertson former European champion as well a uh, very quick for a player Tom Ford who you know makes maximums for fun lives lo locally so he doesn't have to spend the night in the hotel so that <laughs> would benefit him but he's he's great to watch as well and of course Stuart Carrington he's been a joint killer over the last few years so it's a very very tough group for Judd Trump you know I think in this short format we're hoping to see a few draws lots of breaks lots of good pots but a few banana skins for all the players for sure well let's hope they don't <laughs> slip on any banana skins <laughs> Skins on their way to the table for the opening match, shall we? Looking forward to seeing the players. They are waiting in the wings. Your opening match is between Jimmy Robertson and world number one, Judd Trump, and your commentary team for this one, Mark Davis and Dave Hendon. Thank you, Faye. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Always a pleasure to watch the world number one Judd Trump. He battled through a very tough uh, first group with uh, some real experienced players there. Rod Lawler, Anthony Hamilton and Lee Walker. But Trump beat each of them. It's fair to say he didn't necessarily hit the absolute heights. He didn't have to. He got all nine points and here he is looking to put himself into finals day. Of course, he got to the grand final last year, just lost out to Karen Wilson. Jimmy Robertson kept his place on the tour unbelievably he was in danger of falling off that was in the world qualifiers at the end of last season and he's looking uh, to get going again he had 140 break one of two centuries he made in the previous group so 
an interesting one to start here. And these are short matches, so Joe Trump Robert, knows he's got to be on it from the start. Jimmy Robertson to break. First, First thing to say to my co-commentator, Mark break. Davis, is happy birthday, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Uh, afternoon to everybody. It should be a really interesting group, this one. Clearly Judd's favourite to get through, but, you know, with, with Jimmy and Tom and Stuart in the group, you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, one of those three came through because they're all really, really dangerous, fantastic scorers. And uh, obviously in the short format, you know, I'd say it makes them, makes them very dangerous. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes today. Yeah, I guess they all play the sort of game that suits Trump more than his first three opponents. But of course, if they play it really well, he could be in trouble. So I think this first match is really interesting. Yeah, I just think the first frame in, in the matches are so important. As I played yesterday and, you, you know, I knew this anyway, so. they're, they're really important to get a good start. It is in any match, but certainly in the, in the short short formats that these these events are. We have two tables, as you can see, and Ricky Walden and Peter Lyons are kicking off on table two, and that's live on Matchroom Live. The other two players, then Mark Allen and Fergal O'Brien, so another really tough group. Ricky Walden uh, was played, actually, on the first day, so he's had a long time to wait to get back uh, into it again, but he's already into it in the first frame. Obviously, you know Jimmy really well, Mark. Uh, it was amazing that he was in the predicament he was. I suppose winning the ranking event, obviously those points came off, and as he wasn't putting them back on, he fell down the ranking list. Yeah, I'm, you know, look, I, I play in the same club as Jimmy. I practice with him, you know, most days, and um, you know, I know what he can do. He's, he's, he's just one visit all day long. If, if you're not on the top of your game, you're just going to be um, picking out balls all day. Fantastic player. And, I mean, you never really know what goes on in, in the player's mind. I know Jimmy quite well, but I think maybe just once he won the tournament European, maybe put a little bit too much pressure on himself to, to sort of kick on and, and do, you know, make it a regular regular thing. And maybe just put a little bit too much pressure on himself. And once you get a couple of losses, you lose a bit of confidence. And, and that's how the game is. And it, and it starts to get really tough. And he went through a spell where he was just struggling to get, to, um, you know, many wins. You know, I mean, obviously, seeing him at first hand, what he can do for him to nearly fall off the tour is is ridiculous, really, for me. Because as I say, I know I know how good he is, but you know it can happen. It's it's a tough tour these days, and you lose a few games, a bit of confidence. You know that's what can happen. But I was really impressed with him in the World Championships, the game he needed to win, and he was behind in the match, and uh, you know really showed a lot of guts there to to get through in that in that match and keep his tour card. Had to go at the long one there, but it stayed out. So to Trump then with his best chance so far to open up the scoring. One. He's won the Championship League three times as an invitation event. And of course, he's won 22 ranking titles, 14 in the last three seasons. Six. Just working out a plan here. The black covered for now. Oh, and he's completely lost his way here. He's overscrewed it. Seven. Green. Green ball. To Trump set. In terms of previous meetings, Judd Trump uh, holding the edge by six wins to one. As you say, Dave, I mean, the, the the amount of events Judd's won the last few years, you know, with a standard of snooker, not just at the top end, but all the way down, it's, it's as high as it's, it's as it's ever been, is remarkable, really. It's, it just shows how, how good he is and how much he's improved. 
his all-round game now is is as good as anybody. Yeah, what I like about him is he doesn't seem to prioritise the tournaments. He wants to win everything. That was very much the attitude of the Davises and the Hendries. Just going to every tournament, determined to come away with the trophy. Yeah, absolutely, he does. He, he, you know, whether it's a World Championships or, or a lower, a low ranking event, he, he tries his best to win every single event he plays in. And you think well, that's well, that's normal, but it's not always been the case. Some players, you know, they, they don't prioritise the small events, and they can, you know, maybe play a few shots they wouldn't normally play in the lesser ones. But Judd doesn't. He he plays the same all the time, and he, like I say, he just wants to win everything that he plays in, regardless of, you know, what what the ranking or prize money is. Yeah, he tends to play in, in everything as well. He doesn't. He's not a, one of the top players who sort of ducks out. He only well, he missed two events last season: the Masters because of a positive COVID test, and the shootout because he, he just doesn't take to it. Although he could probably do really well in it. Yeah, I don't think it's the shot clock in the shootout that that affects Judd. I mean, he's I think it's uh, pretty much what he averages anyway. So I think he just doesn't quite fancy the tournament, but. You know, that's fine, but it's certainly not the, the time limits because he's a very fluent, quick player. I suppose when you're young, you know, you want to play in everything, Dave. When you're young, you, you, he's still a young lad, he's Judd, and, uh, you know, make the most. When he, when he gets older, he might, he might, a few years later, he might, you know, skip the odd tournament here and there. And, uh, you know, like I say, when you get older, as you say, I skipped the sort of burst of celebrations there at the beginning. It's when you get to 49, you don't really want to talk about it too much. <laughs> I won't mention it again, don't worry. Wow. Now then, not only the in off, the trump this red over the pocket. Yeah, you really have to catch those safety shots very, very thin when you're when you're going across the table there that Jimmy was doing, trying to flick them. But you 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 really wow. near enough got to sort of aim to miss the red, as as mad as it sounds, because any any thicker contact and that's exactly what happens. One. One of the many strengths Judge has got that that first red there is um, he's probably as good as anyone in the game at that top shot. Just a direct screw back with the red over the pocket. You played it with ease. That's a very very tough shot. But a lot of players couldn't even screw the ball back that far from that distance, and he's just done it and made it look easy. Yeah, and he played a good shot off the blue as well to land on the red on the black spot, which frees that now. So maybe able to get the black into play in a couple of shots time. Just opens everything up. We know what a great scorer Judd Trump is. He made 90 centuries last season, and he's already third on the all-time list with 808. 30. So having uh, gone wrong the first time he was in, let's see what he does here. Chance to build up a good lead in this frame. 40. He's a phenomenal scorer now, Judd. I mean, I don't know 20. what his strike rate from frames to centuries is in the last two or three seasons, but it's got to be up there with anyone, I would say. He just seems to have so many, so many centuries, 800 odd now, and I think, I think we'd end up on when he when he retires. 21. But he's just he's just sort of learnt learnt the way you do when you turn into a top player. You you come on, you you're a little bit. A little bit loose, go for a few shots, and then Judge just improved every every aspect of his game, his safety, his cue ball control, everything, and that's why he, he is where he is in the game. Well, managed.
managed to avoid everything going around the table. 27. Yeah, I mentioned the 90 centuries, but he also made over 200... 50 plus breaks as well. They wouldn't all have been frame winners, but most of them would have been. So that's 300 breaks. Not far off being frame winners last season. 28. Oh, I've never seen anyone play the shot I played previously on the pink. You know, completely controlled, going around the table at, you know, at pace. And he, he plays those 33. shots when he needs to, when he runs out of position, which is not very often. He, he plays them so well, so controlled when, when the white's doing so 30. so many miles around the table to get on the next red. And, you know, the pink was a prime example there. He, he played it as well as he could have done. 40. Yeah, looking good to kill this first frame off. In this format, making a good start is so important. Otherwise, you you're want just chasing the day and you're re relying on other people to do your favours. Yeah, it is. I mean, also I played yesterday and uh, you, you, you just need to just play the game as you normally do, but you can't help thinking that you need a good start. And I lost the first game 3 1, so, you know, straight away the, the, the group is kind of out of my hands. So. It's hard to sort of um, not get yourself up for it because I'd always try. Everyone would try to win every game, but it does put you in a bit of a, a bit of a downer when you when you know after one match you're sort of relying on results going your way from then on. So yeah, as you say, it's massively important to even win the first frame, and because um, then you, you win the first frame, you you'd like to think the worst case is you're going to get a draw. Well, Trump still needs another red, as you can see. 64 in front, 67 on. Just 53. lost his way here. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit careful here, because if he's playing safe off one of these reds, he's going to be potentially bringing the black into play. Even though he'd like to knock it safe, he might knock it towards the side and back onto the cushion. He's always going to bring it up, bring it into the open a bit more. Thank you. So, yeah, there was, it's, it's going to be 64 in front, but the balls aren't aren't that bad. If Jimmy could uh, get in, he might have a chance to, to steal the fame. I was like, the three reds just behind the black spot don't look One. great, but I'm, I'm assuming that he would pot the black off the first red and then... It, they'd be in a perfect position to just play a cannon, but he's, you know, he's finished in no man's land there. Unfortunately, he's played the shot to nothing perfectly, actually, but he, he didn't want to play it that well because he was hoping to, to be on the black. Yeah, so something's got to go here, otherwise he needs a snooker. Jimmy Robertson won. So first blood to Judd Trump, 53 break. One. Did the damage. Very interesting group. Tom Ford and Stuart Carrington. Eight. Still to come. But Judd Trump is the man, clearly, who is favourite. Nine. And if he can win the first match, then he'll come back later for his second. I'm sure full of confidence he won't be on again until five o'clock. By then, he'll assess how the group's going. He's won plenty. He still the wants Trump to win plenty more, frame. including this Championship League, and he's made a good start to this group. He's won the first frame. Remember, it's a four-frame match. Judd Trump leads Jimmy Robertson 1-0.
for second frame. So Judd Trump leads Judge Jimmy Robertson 1-0 in the first match of the day here on table one. This is Group A of the second stage of the Championship League, all about getting through to tomorrow. Of course, Corin Wilson and Bay Langning already in this group. The winner of this group will join them, as will the winner of Group B on table two. Ricky Walden leads Peter Lines there 1-0. The other players, Mark Allen and Fergal O'Brien. shot there He's, the last thing you want to do is is miss it thick because as you see the red come back up the table if you want to miss that shot you always got to aim a bit One. thinner if you miss it thin you should be able to go get a good cue ball and, and leave it safe but jimmy's just miss that you know quite thick and uh giving judd another good chance here Perfectly fine for this fed. Six. I would be thinking is uh, the best uh, colour to, to open the beds up in two or three shots time. Judd doesn't normally leave it till the last open bed. Normally gets into him as early as he can. And he may do it on this 30. shot with Finns a little bit low on the bed. Problem is, he'd have to put his screw off the pack, so he'd have, he may leave it for this time. Yeah, he could Four. only just graze them. I mentioned they had Ted between them, 6 1 Trump, the last time they played 21. in the Players' Championship two years ago. Not only did he win 6 0, he made three centuries, so I'm sure Jimmy Robertson well remembers that. 22. He's got a little bit far as he'd like on the, on the blue there, so he may actually play for the loose red now and try and get a better angle on the colour next time. I think as a plan there was to get an angle on the blue to, to open up the reds, but as you say, we just went a little bit too far. So just has to, this, is, this is the last open red. Imperative, he gets a good angle on the on the black or the blue. Twenty-six. Fantastic shot. He just plays that shot so 33. well. A little bit of arc on the cue ball. Finish perfect. 34. Yeah, this is ominous, you've got to feel for Jimmy. To make all those breaks that I mentioned that he made last season. Obviously, you need skill, but also intense concentration. 41. To focus on every shot you play and not take anything for granted. 42. Yeah, you do. I mean, there's, there's plenty of players, Dave, who, when they get to 70 or 80, they just lose focus and then they miss a shot. But, uh, you know, just through lack of concentration, 49. really, more than anything else. The judge just wants to make hundreds every frame. And that can only be a good thing. It just it just keeps your focus all the time, Fifth. and then that take you into the next frame. And he, you know he just loves clearing the table up every time he gets a chance. Highest break in the first phase for Trump was 92, so he's looking for his first 55. century of the season. He wouldn't bet against it coming here. Yeah, and obviously in, in this in this event, you know, it can, it can potentially come down to the highest break as well, which you have to be aware of. So, I mean, he tries to clear the table anyway, so it's not really going to make any difference to his mindset. But, um, you know, potentially it could come to the highest break at some point. He'd be aware of that. Six. 
61. Sixty-two. In the blink of an eye, this is frame ball. Jimmy Robertson said, "What one shot?" I mean, and, you know, the worst he's been 69. in this break is, is just a little, a small, small little bit out of position, mainly on the 70. on the original blue that he played to go into the pack. Other than that, it's just pinpoint position all the time. He's just leaving himself. You know, easy pots really, because his cue boys are good, and that's you know that's what you want. That's what you want to do. That's your plan. Seventy-five. Sounds easy, but it, but it's it's very difficult. It's so easy to 76. just play one loose positional shot, and then that, that kind of snowballs, and then before you know it, you you're leaving yourself a really tricky pot, which which more often than not, um, some of the players end up missing. But he's just been you know pretty much perfect on every ball in this break. Yeah, the phrase "shelling peas" <laughs> springs to mind here. One thing he sometimes does once he's made 84. the 100 is he plays exhibition shots, but I guess in this format he might not do that because, as you say, high break could be very significant. So maybe just make sure of them all. 89. 90. Ninety-five. Ninety-six. So this blue for Judd Trump's first century of the season, and one thing we can guarantee, it will not be his last. Well, that's what you call a quick kill in this frame. First chance he got, stepped in, made a century. Yeah, as you say, they normally judge be um, playing a few exhibition shots from here on in, but I'm not too sure he will be today, as you say, because of the highest break situation. 106. Which is a bit of a shame because, you know, some of the shots he turns um, produces at the end of frames are just scandalous, really. Some of them. 110. Played that green against Barry, didn't he? Barry Hawkins last season, which is just a ridiculous shot. Yeah, and and. It, it was a ridiculous shot, and I, 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 I think I read a, a sort of comment from Judd after because he was well behind in that match, and he said that shot, even though it, it didn't mean anything in the context of the frame, I think Judd had already won the frame. It just gave him such a lift and just a boost to produce a shot like that that it sort of helped him make the comeback that he made, which is which is incredible. So, well, terrific stuff from Judd Trump. Just Judd one Trump. chance he needed, one chance he took, a total clearance of 128. Jimmy Robertson knows. He's got problems now. Trump on top, leading 2-0.
128 a total clearance from Judd Trump in just eight Third minutes. Frame. That frame Jimmy Robertson giving him a two-nil lead, so he's guaranteed a point. Jimmy Robertson now battling for a draw. He only had one shot though in that last frame. I mean, not a lot he could have done. Ricky Walden still 1 0 up on table two against Peter Lyons. One. Here we go again. That's just fantastic, queuing. It really is digging down like that. One. And controlled as well to finish short of the bolt line. There's really not much you can do. It wasn't a bad break from Jimmy. Just left a little bit of that red, Four. but even even so, incredible pot. Well, a mistake. The Trump for one red caught the other. So Jimmy Robertson was sat down there, maybe thinking, "Well, that could be end of match." It's not. He's got an unexpected chance. That red just flicks the other one. One. Remember, Robertson made a 140 and another century as well in the first group, which uh, he played really well in. He had to beat Joe Perry in the last match to win that group, and he did so. Eight. Nine. First decent charge Jimmy's had really in this match. And if it would come out the blue, I think when Judd put that long way, Jimmy was fearing the worst. But you got you know, when you're sitting down you've got to mentally be prepared for an opponent to make a mistake or miss a pot, so you're you know, mentally you're ready to come to the table. You can't expect him to clear up every time, even though back in your mind you do. You've got to be mentally ready to, to have an opportunity when if it if it comes up. Fifty. Sixty. It looks a little bit straight on the black here to the next red. So the red just to the right of the pink. It certainly goes into the corner pocket. I'm not sure about the middle. And he's going to have to play a good positional shot here, I think. He can't go into the red, so he's going to have to play for a loose one. That's excellent. Very good shot. 23. 24. He doesn't hang around, Jimmy. He gets on with it when he gets in the balls. Very fluent 21. player. Very heavy scorer. Thirty-two. Pretty good on the blue. A little, little bit further to absolutely perfect, but he has to make sure he gives himself an angle to go into the reds here. He's still okay. Thirty-three. Yeah, he just didn't quite catch. He just caught the side of the pack there, as you can see, and just lost the cue ball a little bit. 
still could you know still could have finished finished better than that to be honest. Still a bit unlucky, but he wanted to catch the the middle of the pack. And with the red going over to the corner corner pocket, he's going to have to, as he's saying, line up a plant there. He's going to have to move the red. A bit long, big distance between the two reds here, so certainly with safety in mind. It wasn't 39. really. Went all out for it. That was. I thought he'd get the cue ball up in the ball can there. To be fair, must be very confident in putting it. He put it both of them. Well, when Trump made the one two eight and then banged in that long red at the start of the next frame, finished plum on a colour. You know, Jimmy Robertson would have been forgiven for thinking that's three nil. But if he can get two two out of this now, then that I feel like he's won the match. First, he's got to kill this frame off. But what a lifeline! Forty five. Yeah, really good visit this is. I say he's barely had a shot for two frames and seen Judd, you know, throws him out the the previous frame. Really good response. Fifty-two. It's just a little bit further than he wanted. I mean, he's still okay. Obviously, it shouldn't be a problem, but. Just a, a smidgen further than he than he planned on this red. He wow. Didn't feel he could yeah. hold for the blacks. So you're going for blue. That's what I mean. Every time you start him to, you know, change your your, your course of action because he was planning on just staying on the black all the way through that break. Now he's had to go up for the blue. Come a little bit short on the blue. This is where things can get a bit tricky, especially when he's so close to winning the frame as well. Oh, he's played that really well. That could be a frame winner, that shot. Landed perfectly on this red. 59. He needs the black. Trump needs snookers. Oh, and he's missed the black. Wow. Just needed that. Jimmy Roberts. How important will 59. that be? Just the, the, a little bit of a lapse in concentration. You're thinking he'd done all the hard work, so easily done, because he never looked like missing a ball like that throughout the break. It must have been just a, a slight lapse. Maybe took his eye, his mind away from what he was supposed to be doing. It's like I say, so easily done, but that could be very costly, especially when you're playing Judd. So we were envisaging a possible draw. If it's 3-0, then I can't see Jimmy Robertson possibly winning the group. Eight. I'm a little bit short here, Judd. And this red, he might not the other way towards the cushion. I think it doesn't go near the cushion. He didn't want it to go near the cushion, that's why he played it so softly. Good Trump. Eight. The lifeline for Jimmy. Yeah, what a let off that was. Every frame, remember, in this format counts. So Jimmy Robertson potting that red. Looks like he's won what? his first frame. That could have been stolen from underneath him. That would have wrecked the whole day, really, before it had begun. But now. He has a chance still to get a point from this match. What a result that would be. This is a format that I think certainly keeps the players on their toes. Eight. Nine.
50. Twenty one. I think one thing that happened for Jimmy Robertson after he won that tournament three years ago was that other players started to raise their game against him and maybe he became a little guilty of sort of looking at the ranking list waiting for those points to come off but anyway he did well 26. to keep his place on tour in the world championship as mark said there's enough pressure there anyway because it's the world championship without having to worry about tour survival 30. he's got that out of the way so hopefully this season he can just press on 35. and we've got a big big frame coming up next to decide whether the points are shared or whether Judd Trump can take three on this match. He's had chances in this frame. Went wrong initially when 41. tempted the red to another the right frame. corner, caught another one then. After Jimmy Robertson missed the black, had another chance, but missed the red to the same pocket. Robertson delighted when that happened. So there's one frame to go. Judd Trump's lead is cut to 2-1. Well, a very exciting opening match here. This uh, final day of the second stage of the Championship League. Judd Trump led 2-0. Jimmy Robertson, despite a couple of wobbles, final frame, frame three. So 2-1 to Trump. Judd Trump to break. If he wins this frame, he takes three points. If Robertson wins it, they take a point apiece. 50. Ricky Walden is 2-0 up next door against Peter Lyons in the other group. And just quickly to say... Uh, from five o'clock tonight, we will unveil our question. We're running a competition next two days to win tickets to the Champion of Champions final. So look out for that later on. One. I heard your question the other day, Dave, and I, that was one I did know the answer to. The highest break um, in the World Championships. Was that against you, Mark? It, it wasn't against me, oh, right. <laughs> but I, I did have the previous highest break. Oh, that's why you knew. That's why I knew. I was keeping an eye on it. And not only should I, should I really have beaten Sean in the first round, he ended up pipping my break by a point as well. So, not my favourite person. Yeah, he also got, by the way, it was his birthday this week. He, he got a cake. <laughs> no, I don't want to rub it in. Yeah, I was pretty bare on this table, Dave, if I'm honest. Yeah, he also, uh, he's not not a fool, Sean, because he, he bought everyone a load of donuts as well. Anyway, on to serious matters. Jimmy Robertson knocks in the long red and uh, just didn't finish nice on a colour, so he's made the snooker. Big frame this in the context of the day. I'm sure the other two players, Tom Ford and Stuart Carrington, would be very happy to see a draw. 
Yeah, absolutely. As ever, it's the first game. The other two players in the group would we love to see a draw. Give them a boost before they even kind of go out to play. That's a pretty good snooker Jimmy's got there with with reds either side of the pack. Just normally you try and just roll into the the pack on the right hand side there, but with that red there, it's it's you've got a good chance of leaving that on. So this is quite a tricky situation for Judd here. And a few open reds, so it's not easy to just like I say, normally it'd be the side of the pack, but there's a red there that he would probably leave. He's thinking of maybe finish just landing on the left the far left side of the red. That one there. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good shot actually. There is a chance of a plant there for Jimmy Fancy. He's quite good at plants, as I know from experience in the club. He doesn't miss many. He's going to be very unlucky if these reds are covering one another. Yeah, he's played that. He's played that really well. Eight. He's very unlucky if this red doesn't go. Just, just. Well, no. he deserved to be able to pot that. So what a chance now for Jimmy Robertson in this fourth frame. Yeah, absolutely great chance now. Good plant, fantastic shot on the plate, opening all the reds up and sixty. Himself a good he looks really focused today, Jimmy. He's really in the zone. I know he's just joined Elite Sports Management um team with, with Bobby Lee and Curtis Braithwaite who you know have been around the tour for a long time, know all the boys and he's just joined them. Well I think Mark Selby's there, Stuart Bingham, Mark Allen, a few few of the young young lads and I think they're even though it's early, I think they're you know, they're sort of having their effect on Jimmy and really getting his mind right for the matches because he's, he's looked really mentally, really calm and focused, which is exactly what 17. you want to be. It's always good to have a good team around you. They take care of everything else and you should just focus on snooker. Twenty-four. As ever, with with the way the red red side, he's got a great chance here, but he's really got to keep his focus because if he did make a mistake, there they're all there for Judd. Well, it would sh certainly shake things up early on. The way Trump set about that 1 2 8 in frame 2, you think he's going to just romp through not only the match but the whole group. But that was just one frame. He had the chance in frame 3. In fact, he had two chances in the end. and take them. So, 33. Let's see if Robertson can get this draw. It's come slightly the wrong angle on the black. So that's the play for in the middle, which ideally he'd, he'd want to leave there maybe a bit longer for, for a reserve in case he's he run out of position. But he's got to take it now. It, should, it still should be fine. It's always nice to have a run in that 41. position just in case you, you do lose position later on in the break.
47. Forty-eight. Okay, nicely played that shot. He's got a slight angle on the black here. I think the red to the the bottom of the pack of five does go to the corner pocket, as you can see there. So they play on that. And he's just lost the cue ball a little bit there. He wanted to be a bit further up the table. So he's going to be cannoning into the other 55. reds now. But you'd have to think if if this goes well and he gets on a colour. Should should win him the fame. Fifty six. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. Not absolutely perfect. No, I think the same applies now, doesn't it? This next pot, you feel if he gets it, will win in the frame. He's gone about these, I think, very confidently. He's looking good in himself. So one. More tough pot to negotiate. And he's done so. Just slightly lost the cue ball again. Yeah, he's just focusing so much on the pot there. They were just slightly took us off the cue ball, which is which easily done. Because the black, the black was missable. And he's Yeah, and eventually he's broken down. So it's a good break, but there's still enough Peter on. There's 75 64. still on. He leads by 64. Any time you dig it down on the edge, you just flick a bit of side on. So it exaggerates, exaggerates the reaction. You can miss anything, and he was slightly digging down on that. But Judd Trump fails to take advantage. Meanwhile, table two, there's plenty of action there. And Peter Lyons, we, he's commentating with us yesterday, was playing down his well, chances, but he just made a century there in frame three. Don't write off these veterans. Yeah, he's going to be 2-1 down, but a chance to get the draw, and uh, it's high-quality stuff well, there. Eight. Peter actually lost a match in the first stage, but uh, still qualified. 115 on the front. 15 to trail 2 1. Meanwhile, Jimmy Robertson just pushing the black to the cushion there, trying to make things more awkward. Yeah, that's a clever shot from Jimmy there. Trying to red on the cushion and the black on the cushion. All of a sudden, the table's not looking as good as it was just now for Judd. Time not that red on on the cushion up towards bulk is is even better position for Jim. He's not quite on the cushion, is obviously, but that's what he was planning to do. It makes it even tougher. And he has got plenty of points to play with if Judge got a chance. But all the reds going up in the bulk end, he wouldn't be able to take bulk colours with all the reds. So you have to be careful if you did get an opportunity. Again, if he's covered that red on the side cushion, that's a that's a pretty good shot there. That's what he's planning to do. So John would have to go. No, he could obviously Jock can get through to it. Had a pretty good shot. A little bit of trouble here, Jimmy. Now to get this safe. He 
You may go for the red on the left-hand side of the table and try and leave the cue ball. Yeah, I'm not sure the angle's on, really. We could play safe off it. We'll just drop onto the red on the on the ball cushion. That's what he's looking at. Wow. Good trump one. That came out of completely nowhere. So, Jimmy Robertson with a chance to kill this off. And he'll be delighted with the draw, one. considering the way Trump went 2 0 up, considering the chances he had for 3 0. He's played. He played very really well here. I know he's missed a couple of balls just on the, you Six. know, the edges of winning the frame. I think one of them was just down to a slight lapse in concentration. Seven. But he didn't really do much wrong in the first two frames, and he's played played the next two really well. So it's a decent performance here. Yeah, and he makes this grip I think very interesting. Judd Trump unable to get away. Top of the table from his first match, well. so. Tom Ford and Stuart Carrington will be happy enough to see this draw, I'm sure. They're up next. Well, and the frame. Yeah, Judd Trump put together that wonderful total clearance in frame 228, but couldn't make the most of chances in the third frame. Jimmy Robertson stayed positive. I think that was the key for him. And he's got the result in the end he wanted, which was a point. So it ends Judd Trump 2, Jimmy Robertson 2.